Hi everybody, it's me, Benjamin Crudwig, and I have another crochet tutorial for you. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make platonic solids. Now, what is a platonic solid? First of all, there are only five recognized platonic solids. You might know these by a different name, also known as polyhedral dice. So, your standard dice that you would use for like D&D or other gaming tabletop games. What a platonic solid is, or what it's defined by, is that it is a polyhedra, a regular polyhedra, that is consisting of multiple polygons on one form. However, these polygons must be regular polygons, and they must all be the same on the one polyhedra. So take the d20, for instance, or the icosahedron, and here we have a form that's made up of triangles, but all these triangles are the same size, and at every single vertice or point, five of them meet up. So that's basically what a platonic solid is. The reason they're named platonic solids is because they were based, not discovered by, but really defined by Plato in the very, very early 360s BC. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the individual shapes that are going to be necessary to create the actual polyhedral forms, and then I will show how to assemble a couple of them, and then the other ones I did off camera. For this tutorial, you will need worsted weight yarn, I'm using Anzulu Luxury Fibers for better or worsted, in the colorway Birdie. You will need a size F crochet hook, a pair of scissors or snips, a tapestry needle, blocking pins, and a blocking mat. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to make three different shapes. Triangle, square, and pentagon. We'll crochet the triangle in three different sizes. A small, medium, and large. For each of these shapes, we'll be using something called the magic circle to start our shape. What that does is it helps leave a gapless middle. So you'll notice that there isn't a large hole in the center that might exist if you did a chain four circle. To do a magic circle, you're going to take your yarn, the working end, you're going to lay it across your fingers like so. I like to leave a bit of a tail at the end. Wrap it around your fingers, so your working yarn is over here and your tail end is over here. Then, and this is kind of tricky, you hold this part here, down here, with your ring finger. You take your crochet hook, take your working yarn, pull it like you would a loop, pull one loop through, yarn over, and chain. So now we basically have a chain stitch here. The next thing that you're going to do is insert your hook into that loop, yarn over, and do a single crochet. Once you have that first single crochet in, it's a little bit safe to remove it off of your fingers and you can start doing more single crochets into that loop. For the triangle, we'll start with six single crochets. For the square, you'll need eight single crochets. And for the pentagon, you'll start with five single crochets. So starting on a triangle, we'll be making the small, medium, and large triangle. So I already have one single crochet two, three, four, five, six. Once you have your single crochets in your magic loop, pull the tail end 
snug. To end this round, we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet. So we're just going to slip stitch. And then to start the next round, we're going to chain. And then now, we're going to single crochet in that first stitch. In the second stitch, we're going to single crochet. Chain two and then single crochet in the same stitch. Now, single crochet, and in this next stitch we're going to single crochet, chain two, and then single crochet in the same stitch. Repeat that process one more time. Single crochet one, and then in the next stitch, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. That's the end of our round. So to end the round, again, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. To start the next round, we're going to chain one, single crochet in that first stitch, single crochet in the second stitch, and then in that two chain gap over here from the first row, we're going to single crochet, chain two, and then single crochet in that same stitch. Let's do that again. Single crochet one, single crochet two, and then single crochet in the chain two space, chain two, and then single crochet in that same space. And we're going to repeat that one more time. Single crochet one, single crochet two, and then in the chain two space, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And that's the end of the round. I'm going to slip stitch to end the round. And that's all for the small triangle. For the medium triangle, we're going to go from here, chain one, then we're going to single crochet three across, in that chain two space, we're going to single crochet, cut my yarn, and a single crochet, chain two, single crochet, in the same spot. Let's do that again. Single crochet one, two, three, then in that chain two spot, single crochet one, chain two, single crochet in the same spot. One last time. Single crochet one, two, three, And then in that chain two spot, single crochet one, chain two, single crochet in the same spot. Now, just like all the other rows, we're going to end by slip stitching in the first chain, or in the first stitch. That is the medium sized triangle. For the large size triangle, we're just going to add one more row. So we're going to chain one to start the row, single crochet four, in that chain two gap, we're going to single crochet one, chain two, 
and single crochet one in that same gap. Repeat, single crochet one, two, three, four. In this chain two gap, we're going to single crochet one, chain two, single crochet in the same spot. I'm gonna do that again. One, two, three, four. Single crochet one, chain two, single crochet in the same gap. And then we're gonna end that with a slip stitch in that first stitch. And that's the large triangle. In each of these shapes, we're doing a chain two in the corners to create a really nice sharp corner. For the square, we're going to start the same way with the magic circle, but instead of six single crochets, we're gonna have eight inside. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And just like with the triangle, I'm gonna pull this tail to cinch up the circle And to end this round, I'm gonna slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. Now, for this row, I'm gonna chain one to start my round, single crochet in that first stitch, then I'm going to single crochet, chain two, and single crochet in that same stitch next stitch I'm going to single crochet one, then in the next stitch I'm going to single crochet one, chain two, and single crochet in the same spot. I'm going to repeat that two more times. Single crochet one, single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the same stitch. Again, single crochet one, then single crochet one, chain two, single crochet in the same spot. It's the end of the round. I'm gonna slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. Now, I'm going to chain one to start the round single crochet in the next two stitches. Then, in that chain two spot, I'm going to single crochet one, chain two, single crochet one, and now I'm gonna repeat across. So single crochet in the next two stitches. In the chain two gap, single crochet one, chain two, single crochet one in the same gap. Repeat. Single crochet two, single crochet in that chain two gap, chain two, single crochet in the same spot. And one more time. Single crochet in the next two stitches single crochet in the chain two gap, chain two, single crochet in the same spot. Then we're going to slip stitch into that first stitch. And now I chained one. I'm gonna go single crochet in the next three stitches. So one, two, three, then in that chain two gap, I'm gonna single crochet one, 
chain two, single crochet one in that same spot. I'm gonna repeat it on the other three sides. Single crochet one, two, three, and then chain two gap. I'm gonna single crochet one, chain two, single crochet one. Repeat. One, two, three, in the chain two gap, single crochet, chain two, single crochet in that same spot. Finally, one, two, three, single crochet one in that chain two gap, chain two, single crochet in that same gap, slip stitch to end the round. And that is the square that we're going to be using in this tutorial. For the pentagon, we're going to be starting our magic circle with five single crochets. So I already have one, two, three, four, five. So now I'm going to cinch that closed. And just like the others, I'm going to slip stitch in that first stitch to end the round. And on this one, this row, we're going to increase in every single stitch. And what that means is that we're going to do a single crochet twice in every stitch. So that's one, two in that stitch, one, two in that stitch, and I'm just going to go around and make sure that I end with ten stitches. And then I will slip stitch in that first stitch of the round, and I'm going to chain one to start the next round. So for this round, I'm going to single crochet in that first stitch, single crochet, chain two, and then single crochet in that same space in that stitch, single crochet one, then in the next stitch, single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the same spot. Okay. Single crochet one, next stitch, single crochet one, chain two, single crochet in the same spot. I'm gonna repeat that two more times. Single crochet one, single crochet one, chain two, single crochet one in the same spot. Then I'm gonna do single crochet one, the next stitch I'm going to do single crochet one, chain two, single crochet one. And now I'm going to end the round just like all of the others by slip stitching in that first stitch. And that is the size of pentagon that we're going to use. After crocheting all of your shapes, I suggest blocking them by using blocking pins and a blocking mat. How I do this is I either steam them heavily, or I soak them in water, wring out the water, and lay them out with the pins to dry. This helps give you the sharp edges and corners that you need to make these look like great shapes. For this section of the video, I'm going to start with the platonic solid that has the fewest number of sides, and then make my way up. The first one that we're going to start with is the tetrahedron. It's a four-sided platonic solid, and we're going to need four large triangles. To attach these together, you're going to want to make sure that you have all the same faces facing up. Then, taking a tapestry needle and some of the same yarn, I'm 
I'm going to thread my needle. And then just tie a knot at the very, very end. I want sharp edges and sharp corners on all of these shapes. So I'm going to set two aside for now and take two of the triangles and I'm going to place them wrong sides together. Here's how you can tell if it's the wrong side or the right side. So the right side looks a little bit more smooth and the wrong side is a little more bumpy. I'm going to start in one corner. I'm going to pull my yarn through. Then what I'll do is just snag that loop and I'll trim that later. So now what I'm going to do is sew back and forth through the stitches. So you can see the edge of my work here, I have these V's here and here. I want to make sure that I go through underneath all four of those little pieces there. So basically through both V's. Now you don't want to pull too tight, so you just saw what I did there, is if you pull too tight it'll get all scrunchy. You just want it to be tight enough that they'll stay together, but not so tight that it'll pull. Okay, so I'm down at the other edge here, and that means I've sewn these two pieces together. I'll take another triangle here along this edge and just repeat this process like so. I made it to the next corner, so now I have something that looks a bit like this. I'll take my final triangle and place it like I did the others along that other free edge. So I've now reached the corner on that one, and this is what it looks like from when it's flat. What I'm going to do now is sew up the other sides. So I'm at this join down here. I'm just going to knot this off like so. And I'll weave this in later. But you'll notice I still have an open flap here. At this point what, I'll, what I would do is either stuff it just a little bit or leave it completely empty. However, I think a little bit of stuffing will make it look good. For the following platonic solids, follow the same instructions as we did for the tetrahedron. For the cube, use six squares, for the octahedron, use eight medium triangles. For the dodecahedron, use 12 pentagons. And for the icosahedron, use 20 small triangles. For the D10, which we will get to later, you will need 10 small triangles.
Use the line drawings of the different platonic solids in order to map out where each shape needs to go. Once you're done attaching all the shapes together, leave a gap in each of the large platonic solids to then stuff it with either stuffing or, like I used, some leftover tool that I had in my fabric stash. For the D10, take 10 small triangles, a simple 5 in a pentagonal shape. Then, using the tail end of one of your pentagons, sew them together. Make sure that the top half is offset from the bottom half by just a little bit. Once you're done sewing these together, you can stuff it like the other forms, and then adjust the shape of each of the faces. So now that you've seen how to make all the shapes, and I've assembled a few of the different actual polyhedral forms, I wanted to go through each one and talk about the successes and failures of each form. So this is the tetrahedron. I think it came out pretty well. I did stuff all of these with some leftover tool that I have to keep it lightweight, but you know, somewhat still have a form. Because this is crochet and because this is soft sculpture, everything is going to be a little bit squishy or very moldable. So you can tell sometimes one side bulges out, one side dips in a little bit. However, I am pretty happy with this form. I do wish that the points were just a little extra pointy. I, I could have added um, another chain stitch in the, um, the pointed part of the pattern. I could have done chain three instead of chain two, and that might have given me a pointier, pointier tip. I'm not sure. Then we have the cube, or the hexahedron, or the D6. And this one, I think, is probably the second best out of the bunch. The faces are all very parallel with each other, the edges are crisp and clean, and even though it is a little squishy again, being soft sculpture, I think it looks great. The D8, um, this one is fine. I think that it's a little too bulgy, so I might actually have to take out more of the stuffing. I tried not to overfill them. But I do love how this one looks with the, the ridges all the way around, even though it is more circular or spherical than it is, you know, eight-sided. I think the point gets across here just fine. This one is my favorite. This is the D12. It's made out of pentagons. And I feel like this one shows the form basically the best, besides, you know, the easy form of the cube. This one really, really took the shape well. Part of that, I think, is the small nature of the triangles that I used for this particular, or uh, small size of pentagons that I used for it, so it doesn't flex as much as the others. Um, I, I just think it's, I think it's beautiful. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> and then this is the D20, um, or also known as the icosahedron. This one, even though I used the smaller triangles for this shape, I find that the way that all of these came together and with the stuffing, it does not want to have any super flat faces. So it's very rounded. I still like how it looks. It's fun. Um, you can roll it around like a ball. And honestly, like, Again, it just, it tells a story. It's not as clear and concise and sharp as I would like it to be. So I may have to readjust this pattern at some point, make it larger, or um, figure out a way to join this, the triangles in a different way that makes them less bulgy. Um, or use a smaller crochet hook to make everything a little bit tighter. I'll, I'll research that one and figure out what I want to do, but honestly? It's not too bad. I, I like it. And now for the one that is not a platonic solid, it's the D10. Now the D10 was interesting because I didn't want to make the shape, the teardrop shape in the crochet pattern. I wanted to use an existing shape of what I was already teaching in this episode. So I took triangles 
And after I blocked them, I essentially just took one of the bottom parts of the triangle and tugged it a little bit. That way it would create a little bit of a teardrop. Now these are essentially, how they're joined is you have five triangles here and another five triangles here and they're offset from each other so it's a strange little pattern um, but I, I think it worked out well again it's not a platonic solid but I felt like if I'm going to teach you how to crochet platonic solids I might as well crochet a set of D&D &D dice right so um, that's that's what I did I've wanted to make this video for years now, and honestly, I don't know why I didn't before. Um, it's something that I've always been interested in. I love basically mapping out crochet and geometry in the same world. So you might have seen the hyperbolic crochet video that I've done, um, talking about you know hyperbolic forms and how you can not necessarily prove them, but you can model them using soft sculpture like crochet. Now, it's not as effective in the polyhedral world, but it is something that I think would make a wonderful addition to a math room. You can play with them. You know, they're essentially soft balls that you can toss at each other. So the other reason that I wanted to do this video is because I recently moved to Los Angeles uh, and my friends live out here and they are very much into Dungeons and Dragons and have kind of brought me along in with them on this. and part of Dungeons and Dragons is dice. So I, I wanted to make something in homage to them. Um, please also, they do have a YouTube channel um, devoted to the kind of gaming sphere. It's not du just Dungeons and Dragons content. Um, it's some painting of minis. And also they have a, an episode called, or a segment called The Bestiary where they go over the monsters that you may encounter. Um, in a scenario in Dungeons and Dragons. So if you are into, you know, that kind of world, or if you're into miniature painting, go check them out. They're called The Adventurers Pack here on YouTube and on Instagram. Um, so please go check them out. I'll put links down in the description bar and give them some love from me. Um, I would love to help boost them up in this venture that they're having. So thank you all so much for watching. I am so happy that I finally did this video um, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon on wherever it is on your screen um, to get notifications every time I upload a new video. See you in the next video.